What is going on everybody? Welcome to the 21st financial plotting tutorial with matplotlib and python where we left off. We made the addition of the uh, relative strength index to the top of our chart. few things I would like to change about it, but I think the best thing for us to do is to go ahead and add, um, or at least start adding, the MACD indicator and then we'll change up the colors with RSI and the MACD all together at the same time probably change some of these colors too and just make the chart just holistically work with itself. So we'll get to the changing of the colors uh, later in, in this video and probably the next probably at least one or two videos we'll be going over the addition of MACD. So what is MACD if you don't know? Uh, MACD, M-A-C-D stands for Moving Average Convergence Divergence. What does that mean? Um, basically the idea of the MACD is it's kind of like two things and rolled into one, right? It, it's like a trend following and also a momentum indicator. You know, and our RSI is obviously also a bit of a momentum indicator, but it's more of like a momentum oscillator, right? Um, but the MACD is as well. So anyway, <laughs> the idea of the MACD is basically to do trends and momentum. And the way that it works is, well, one, it has, it's got three different lines to it. You've got the actual like MACD line, which is the usually you can change up the numbers, but it's usually like the 12 day exponential moving average, or rather 12 period um, exponential moving average minus the 26 period exponential moving average. Then you've got the signal line, which is the nine day exponential moving average of the MACD line, which is the one I just explained. And then finally you have the MACD histogram, which is the MACD line minus that signal line. So kind of confusing, but um, maybe what I'll do is I'll comment it in just in case you're not familiar with it. And if you're familiar with it, then, you know, whatever. So, uh, so that's what we're going to be doing. And so the only thing that is left for question is the exponential moving average. What the heck is that? Well, the difference between a, a, like a simple moving average, everything carries the same weight, right? An exponential moving average um, places more emphasis or more value um, on more recent data, right? So the, the newer data means more to the moving average than the older data, and this kind of helps it react quicker. Um, so anyway, that's the difference of that. So to do this, we kind of need two things, right? We need, first of all, a function for an exponential moving average, and then we also need um, you know, the entire MACD function. So, um, as you might guess, this is going to be uh, a little bit, probably, like I said, this video, at least one other video, and maybe this video and two videos to get through all of this, because then we actually got to plot it and everything. Oh, it's going to be huge. So, anyway, so let's go ahead and scroll up, and this is kind of where we've been storing all of our functions, right? So this is where we're going to begin. And I think what we'll do, we'll just put it, let's just move this up a little bit, and we'll put exponential moving average underneath our moving average. So we'll say define, and this will be exponential, exp moving average. And again, this is going to have values and a window. Now, what, we, what we'll do for this is, again, it's, it needs to weight the, the closer or more recent data more. And luckily for us, NumPy has exponential kind of like built into it, so we can kind of use it. So anyway, weight equals np.exp, and then we want to use np.linspace, oops, linspace, negative one, comma, zero, comma, and then the window. Now, um, the next thing we want to do is say weight divided by equal uh, weight dot sum. So just in case you don't know, like divided equal kind of works the same as like if you were to do plus equals, right? Or minus equals, you know? So divided by, divided equals. Now the next thing we want to do is uh, we'll just say a equals mp dot convolve. And what do we want to do? Values, weights, mode equals full and then the array for this um, everything to the length of 
values. So like all of the data basically. Oops. Then what we want to go ahead and do is say um, a colon window equals the average of the window and then we return average. So that's our exponential moving average uh, function. So now we can actually use it within our MACD function. Uh, and I think, you know, most of my videos have been running kind of long. So I think I'll cut off the video here and then the next video will uh, create the function for computing the MACD. Then we'll actually, I don't know, make some space for MACD and then we'll actually plot MACD. So, um, if that sounds interesting to you guys, then you should continue on with the next video. As always, thank you for watching, thank you for your support, your subscriptions, and until next time.